our next review I'm going to take a look at a Mastertronic Plus release from 1989 which goes by the name of T-Bird and I've also got the Amstrad CPC version of this game so I'm going to do a little comparison at the end of the main video. So as you can see this is a Mastertronic Plus release rather extravagant logo there of the T-Bird inside an eagle and some American flag graphics behind there and the artwork which seems to be better off put this way around is uh, some spaceships flying and something that looks suspiciously like TIE fighters going into battle against them and the spine's got T-Bird on as you can see it's two ninety nine price which you probably already knew and on the back we've got some screenshots which are all rather dark and black with a very big status bar and uh, looks like you shoot them up from there and the blurb says introducing the best in personal transportation the Ford T-Bird capable of 0 to 600 in 5.6 seconds maximum speed of 1346 miles per hour which is obviously just randomly thrown in there equipped with new and revolutionary automatic braking system Mega Ghetto Blast in-car entertainment, blah blah blah. Basically, you seem to be driving a very high-powered car, but in a shoot 'em up. And here's the instructions, which repeats that crappy blurb from the back about the Ford T-Bird and all its great stuff, braking and in-car entertainment, none of which you really care about. Game info. So there you go. You're in your. Oh, it's saying you're driving a Lada now. Very good, very funny. Now you're suddenly in the middle of a local alien communities and they're not happy about you being there. You must fight off the alien attacks. You know your skill and agility and all the bolt-on weaponry on your new car. So on it goes inside telling you about the extra weapons. Sidearms, shield, faster firing hyperspace, invincibility. And eventually there's a end of level guardian by the looks of it and there's some controls and that's pretty much it loading instructions are there as well presumably yeah and the rest of the inlay is filled with the same instructions in our foreign languages here's the title screen then as you can see it says t-bird at the top it's got a high score table which i'm currently top of Thanks to an earlier performance. Um, it's got some publishing and copyright information. This was developed by PAL Developments, who did uh, other games for the Commodore 64 for Mastertronic, such as Sidewinder 2 and also Bomb Fusion. And the music's by Jackmaster, who did this music for those two games as well. Uh, good composer, to be fair, and a good tune. And the tune within the game is cool as well, as you'll hear in a minute. Uh, the only options on the title screen are to whether to have music or sound during the game. Uh, we'll leave it with music, uh, and otherwise it's press fire to start, so I'll do that. So you've got a big status bar at the bottom of the screen, um, and it's kind of an into the screen, on rails, kind of 3D shooter, kind of reminiscent of Space Harrier, especially this first sequence of enemies that comes towards you which has killed me, not a very good example there, I'll try that again so basically you can hold the fire button down to auto fire which is nice as well so you kill the enemies and you get a power up comes into the screen which gives you first of all faster fire and then you get a bunch of asteroids or clouds or something flying towards you and you can shoot them as well uh, so it's, as I say it's kind of 3D into the screen scrolling um, not very well done uh, with no background it makes it a little bit uh, bland to say the least and the things coming towards you are always the same these little sort of towers, the green towers and the main uh, spaceship is frankly pathetic just this little spaceship grey thing floating around the screen uh, you might notice I missed the power up the second time around and there's a reason for that and the reason is that I want to try and collect the second power up which you only get if you ignore the first one hoping these things will come back to me in a second and I can shoot them, no they've gone it's not very good so basically you can only get additional power ups by ignoring power ups that you've previously collected 
It's a bit of a strange mechanism, but there you go. Uh, you've also got uh, an energy bar, which you can probably see at the bottom of the screen there, the blue thing, uh, which obviously goes down when things hit you, and eventually you lose a life. So hopefully when I collect this, I'll get another type of weapon, which is sideways firing, as you can see. And basically that's it for the game, it's just uh, fly through this not very well realised uh, into the screen shooter, shooting things and eventually you'll get to a, a baddie at the end of the level like a boss, which we'll get to in a moment. See I collected the power up there again and it's gone back to faster fire which I already had. So it's a bit strange that you can only get the same power up from shooting a batch of enemies and you have to avoid it to collect the next one, but there you go. So here we go, this is the end of level boss, so basically you just shoot at it from around the screen, it shoots at you. It's not the most awe-inspiring of bosses. Uh, the graphics are a bit of a mixed bag, some of the aliens look quite nicely drawn. The main spaceship, as I said, is a bit crap. Uh, the status bar is quite nicely done, and uh, the text is quite cool, it appears on the screen as well. So next up, I'm on level 2, and as you can see, the things in the scrolling up towards you from the bottom of the screen are a bit different collect another faster fire power up there uh, there's also different meteors flying towards you but otherwise it's pretty much the same thing the enemies uh, are in the same sort of formation and as you probably noticed so far I've gone through the game without lo losing hardly any health uh, and it's been pretty easy so far whether that will continue remains to be seen so I'm going to try and avoid a few more power ups so that I can get one of the good ones. If you die, by the way, then the power-ups reset to just the original ones as well, which is also quite frustrating. But so far, I'm actually doing much better than I've done any previous goes. I'm hoping to get to the end of the second level here with a bit of luck. So here comes another power-up, and that's side shooting again, which I've already got. A bit annoying, as I've already said, and I'll stop saying it again. Overall, it's not a bad game. Um, as I said, the, uh, the 3D effects are a bit naff, They're probably about as good as you're going to get on the Commodore 64. And the uh, music's cool, and uh, the sound effects, by the way, if you choose not to have the music, are pretty crap. Uh, the main graphics are a bit naff, but the graphics are overall not too bad. So it got pretty much panned um, in the press and by uh, reviewers on various websites, but it's actually not that bad. Uh, it's far from being the greatest game and whether it's worth a 2 99 asking price uh, is a bit dubious, there goes another life and it's got a bit tricky now and that's game over I didn't get to the end of the second level unfortunately never mentioned this thing moving backwards and forwards across the bottom of the screen no idea what that's for I uh, just want to know, I've actually already got my name in from a previous go which it stores for you but this um, name entry screen is one of the most peculiar I've ever seen because each time you put a new letter in it starts at the end there, so I'll just put the same letters in as I've already got just to demonstrate, and then suddenly it puts the cursor at the end of this, uh, the row of letters which is really strange so if I want to put extra ones in like an exclamation mark and then another exclamation mark it doesn't go to the one you're already on it goes back to the end, which is of course the delete option so a little bit strange, but the end and to put your name in is there and that's about it really um, not too bad a game, but probably not worth $2.99. If it was a $1.99 release, given that it came out in 1989, it probably would be worth the money, but $2.99 probably a bit of a rich asking price for what is not a, a very challenging or that well put together kind of a game. So that's the Commodore 64 version. Now it's time to take a look at the Amstrad version. Will it be any better? Will it be any worse? Or will it be exactly the same? So let's take a quick look at the Amstrad packaging and it will be a quick look because it's almost identical to the Commodore 64 version. The only difference on the front being the Amstrad colour and so on on the front there. Spine's exactly the same, the back's exactly the same as well because it's got the Commodore 64 screenshots on there. It does say at the bottom, screenshots may be taken from a different version, or it would do if they hadn't cropped the edge of the cardboard a little bit incorrectly there and inside it's exactly the same all the same nonsense about the car all the same game info as far as I can tell anyway 
all the same stuff about the weapons and eventually the only real difference is the loading instructions which are the Amstrad loading instructions funnily enough so that's the packaging the game is now loading so here's the first difference between the two versions this one's got a loading screen not a very spectacular one no picture but it does say loading T-Bird written by Rich Stevenson published by Virgin Mastertronic copyright PAL Developments and there's a PAL Developments logo at the bottom as well quite nicely put together text wise but not the most interesting of loading screens I think you'd agree here's the Amstrad version then and you can see straight away that there's a dramatic difference in the graphics much more colourful on the Amstrad doesn't take up a lot of space on the screen but does look very nice and bright and colourful and um, there's no title screen to speak of that was displayed when the game was loading so you just get this game over screen uh, until you press fire and start the game and uh, when you start the game you can see the graphic for the main spaceship is a lot better and again the, the illusion of 3D is much uh, more impressive looks a little bit more like Space Harrier um, which I think is what it's based on maybe Space Harrier crossed with Afterburner or, or there's another Sega game called Galaxy Force that perhaps it was uh, based on uh, the basic concept's the same uh, if you shoot a wave of enemies then you get uh, a power up it's more obvious which power up you're about to collect because they light up on the status bar at the top there so here comes that power up orb and it's now moved on to the next power up I don't know if that's because I missed it I think it probably was actually I think they're in the same order as they were on the Commodore game so you get faster um, bullets first so I should get another one coming up here now let's see if I can get that, there we go oh and I've got killed, oops um, it is a lot more difficult to get killed as well, Not, things don't seem to drain your energy as much the biggest difference between this and the Commodore game apart from the graphics and the lack of music the sound's pretty naff there we go, finally got a power up um, the biggest difference is that when you hold the fire button down you don't auto fire that does seem to do bombs instead actually when you hold the fire button down um, which means there's a lot of pressing the fire button to shoot stuff giving me serious thumb ache at the moment so I've got the sideways firing bullets now as well uh, so overall, oh here comes the end of level boss which again is way more impressive than the C64 version let's try launching a couple of bombs at it doesn't seem to do anything no I'm not sure what's going on now I don't seem to be able to launch a bomb which is a bit annoying you'd have thought this would be the perfect place to do it but no, nothing seems to be happening now what happened on my previous playthrough was basically I sat here trying to shoot the end of level boss with no music, no sound or anything for about 10 minutes and never killed it and eventually killed me and it looks like we're in the same situation again there just doesn't seem to be any way you can hit the bloody thing that it actually registers a hit um, so whether there's actually a second level to this game or not I'm not sure I'll ever find out because basically wherever I shoot it's not making any explosion sounds it's got me again there Oh, and now I've gone on to the next level. Oh no, actually, if you look closely, I must have been pressing fire a few too many times. Lives have reset, bombs have reset, scores reset. I've actually started a new game there, whereas I thought it had sent me to a new level. Uh, so I'm not going to play through it again. I think it's fair to say this one, this version is also flawed. The graphics are great. It looks really arcade-style graphics. But the lack of any music and uh, the real sort of peculiarities with the gameplay I mean it's actually less playable than the Commodore 64 version so in summary this one's also not worth 2 99 and actually if you combine the graphics from this game with the sound and the gameplay of the Commodore 64 version you'd actually have a pretty damn good game I think uh, but as it stands what you've got is two pretty mediocre games <laughs>